Hello, my name is Claudia van Zuiden. I'm the co-founder of Conscious World Agents. I'm delighted and honored to share with you an interview that I had with Dr. Irvin Laszlo. Please let me read out some of his biography. Irvin Laszlo is a philosopher and a system scientist, the author, co-author and editor of 106 different books that have appeared in a total of 25 languages. He has written over 400 articles and research papers. Dr. Laszlo is the founder and president of the international think tank, the Club of Budapest, and of the prestigious, the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research. He's a recipient of various honors and awards, including honorary PhDs from the United States, Canada, Finland, and Hungary. Mr. Laszlo received the Goya Award, the Japan Peace Prize in 2001, the Assisi Mandir, of Peace Prize in 2006 and I was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 and 2005. Both a musician, philosopher and scientist and someone who has been recently named in the 2019 one of the top 100 people in the realms of spirituality. He received the Sorbonne's highest degree, a doctorate in letter and human science. He's lectured and taught at various US universities, including Yale, Princeton, Northwestern, the University of Houston, and the State University of New York. He's run global projects at the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, and at the request of the Secretary General. He was also cited among the top 100 most inspiring people. Well, without further ado, please enjoy the conversation I had with Dr. Irvin Laszlo. It inspired me and I, I am sure uh, many of you will enjoy it too. Thanks for watching. So uh, grateful to have this conversation with you today, Dr. Laszlo, and thank you for taking the time and, and uh, answering to my call uh, to have this, this 30 minutes with you where we can maybe share some of your uh, wisdom about the way forward. I've started an, um, uh, a documentary called The New Dawn, and then I was interviewing Henry Mentink from the Fear House in the Netherlands, and he spoke about you so highly, uh, about your work and all the, the, the literature that you're making available with your science uh, and philosophy background, how this can help humanity at large um, especially when it comes to consciousness. And I'm the co-founder of Conscious World Agents. And I thought, well, if 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 someone is going to help us in, in shedding light in how this evolving consciousness of humankind can be guided in the right direction with this new dawn and this, this new shift, uh, I think you called it the bifurcation <laughs> at some point. Dr. Laszlo, I would like love to hear <clears throat> how you see how we can connect again, especially as Europeans, uh, because we we don't seem to have the capacity like many of our friends and relatives in the uh, indigenous cultures, how to connect again with our inner wisdom that could help us to move forward with this evolving consciousness. Well, that's a big task, actually. It's, it's the big challenge that we face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me what, what you would like to talk about specifically. Um, well, what I would like to know is, you know, how you would suggest uh, that you've written also in your books about how we as a human level uh, can evolve this consciousness and also perhaps how in, innate wisdom from the indigenous wisdom that might be stored in the Akashic field, how that could help us to move forward. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays, what I speak about is the or what I call our, our sacred mission. Mm. A sacred mission, not as Westerners or, or, or Easterners or, or indigenous cultures, but as human beings. Mm. Humanity, the human community has a big mission to return to the nature, mm. to, to what I call nowadays also using this metaphor, of, of dancing with the planet. Lovely. So we have to return to recognizing that we are human beings, independently of where we were born and what education we had, we as human beings have a role to play 
this is a sacred role because it's a, in 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 a very supreme objective that we are facing. Mm -hmm. Supreme objective is to contribute to the flowering of life on the planet. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, of course, this is a key to our own survival. Yes. We have to bring in a dimension of the holy, of the sacred, mm -hmm. as the in, in, so-called primitive but indigenous and highly sophisticated cultures have mm -hmm. always known, have mm -hmm. always regarded these, these tasks of what we're doing and how we relate to each other and to nature as something which is above the everyday concerns. Mm -hmm. We need to, uh, to endow our mission of creating a livable, thrivable planet with a holy dimension. Mm -hmm. Dimension that this is something which is, has of cosmic as a paramount, supreme significance. Mm -hmm. Think of it this way. This is what I'm trying to get across. <clears throat> we are a conscious species. Now, every species has consciousness. Ours is articulate to the extent where we recognize that we have a consciousness. We recognize that we can know the world around us. And we have to accept that we have a responsibility to act in a way that is good for us, but is also good for the world, that we can all survive together. This is the big challenge before us. And this is something that if we don't master in time, it endangers the very survival of humanity. Mm -hmm. Much of life on earth is endangered at the same time. We have gone too far, far too far in seeking our own benefits by artificial synthetic means, always trying to improve our nature improving on, on our relations to the world around us. Artificial means, artificial communication uh, that can serve good purposes like these conversations, for example, mm -hmm. but also artificial intelligence, which is very often not just helping people to do chores that we have to do, but also taking over the conduct of human affairs as a danger, and then they'll do it in a way which benefits the part and disregards the whole. Because we are inheritance of the inheritors of the whole, of the whole memory of humankind, mm -hmm. of the Akashi field that's built into us. It's on every cell of our brain and body. Mm -hmm. It's a part of our consciousness. And this is the inheritance that we need to bring to fruit, that we need to 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 be concerned with, to husband, to to, pro to promote. Because this, we are natural beings. We are part of evolution in the universe, more particularly evolution on this planet, evolution of life. We are an essential part of it. And we have increasingly forgotten that, disregarded that. The, the classical cultures, the traditional cultures knew it. They still know it to the extent that they refuse to become simply Westerners, but continue on their own traditions. Mm. We know that evolution is moving in a direction which is on the whole irreversible. This is the direction that is given from the initiation of the evolutionary process 13.8 billion years ago after the singularity known as the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. It has started with the maximum entropy, that means total chaos, mm -hmm. no order, no, no, no constraints, no restrictions. Everything could go at the same time in any way it could, could go. And they were really just inert clouds of gases swirling about. And out of this total chaos, Evolution has already produced significant levels of order. What I call, and scientists around me and my, and my friends and partners call coherence. Mm. Coherence means that every part, a part of a system is in contact and responds to and works together with some other part. A coherent system is where every cell, a coherent, let's say, living system, is that every cell of the body is finely tuned to interact 
and join together with the other cells and together they maintain and evolve the whole system, which is the organism, the living organism. <laughs> there are living organisms. That, above that, there are communities of living organisms. There are ecologists. There are social, cultural communities, natural communities. There are holy communities. And all this is a, is a coherence orientation in the world, moving toward higher and higher levels of order and coherence, not subordinating the part but joining the part together so that they together form an interacting, a, a living whole. This is the great challenge before us, to introduce the, the dimension of the sacred into our everyday effort to survive on this planet. We now know that we are facing what is sometimes we refer to as the sixth mass extinction. Hmm. A tremendous accelerating extinction of forms of life or species of living systems on planet. Now, if, it, if the diversity progresses, we also will go under. We need the diversity. We need the life around us to live together with. We cannot survive without the rest of the living system on Earth. We will try to survive on Mars alone or another planet. We cannot do that except we through all the limited ways through all the artificial means. But here we have natural environment, the environment which is a living environment, which is the womb, which is the base for our existence. So that is the year challenge before us. This mm -hmm. is the sacred mission of humanity, I call it. Mm -hmm. And this is to use the other term that you yourself use. This is to master to orient the bifurcation. A bifurcation is a process which doesn't allow reversals. You must move on, but whether you move up or down is not prescribed. You can move to a higher levels of order and coherence or to a greater chaos. Artificially, if we pursue only our own short-term interest, you will be creating tensions as you're already doing it. We are over-exploiting the environment. Mm -hmm. We are creating conflict. And eventually, we will be damaging our own health, our own survival ability. So the next step before us is to recognize consciously that we are the universe is conscious-oriented, coherence-oriented. It is moving toward those levels of order that the great spiritual masters for the past several thousand years have foreseen as the future universe in which we are closer union, union with each other and with the deeper spirit of soul, whether we call it the Tao or the heaven on earth or whatever we call it, the, 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 the place of the greater spirit, <clears throat> that is the direction in which the universe is moving. And that's not just spiritual insight, that's mm -hmm. science. We see that order is, 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 is increasing sequentially, higher and higher levels are coming in. There's a lot of surface noise, surface mm. disturbance, obviously. But on the whole, even humanity now is seeing that it's beginning to organize itself on the planet, not just as a separate nation or country, but as humanity, as a human species, we're beginning to deal with humanity as a whole system, talking about its aggression, talking about its will to join together and, and beginning to move on to a global level. This is the direction in which you're moving. If a, if a visitor from Mars would see this, visit mm -hmm. us and see what we are doing, they would say, yes, there's a lot of birth pangs. There's a lot of problems. Humanity is getting itself organized as a species, as a human, whole species. Wholeness is the drive. Evolution is the way it is unfolding. And we are part of it. So to return to this is the great task, is the sacred mission. And it is more than just for our own survival. It is the mission of a conscious species on a small planet, which, which has a fantastically endowed possibilities for creating higher levels of integration and order 
and system within system. This is our mission. And if we can accept it, if we can perceive it as a mission, then we'll add a dimension to it, which is more felt, which is more committed, more engaged than simply trying to pursue short-term interests in our own or in our own way and for our own good. Our own good is joined with the common good. What is good for the whole system is good for us. But we cannot say that what is short good in good in the short term for us is necessarily good for the whole because it could over exploit the whole. Mm -hmm. It would create conflict. It would create an overextension of the artificial means over the natural means. So we have to keep the whole in mind. I think this holistic orientation is the systemic orientation, is the new paradigm in science. Mm -hmm. We have got to apply it. Apply it not only as a as a good tool, a good instrument, a good way of thinking, but as a holy goal, as an objective that we need to pursue if we want to be a constructive part of life on this planet, which is a part of the of the solar system, which is a part of the galaxy, which is part of the meta galaxy of the universe as a whole. We are a part of all that, and we have to wake up to acting as a conscious and responsible part. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much. And, and I really can relate to what you're saying. I think this is a call many of us are hearing at this time as well. And I think it's important then to also explore ways of how we can return to this sacredness, this re reciprocal way of living with the earth, with all that's given to us. And I think this is where a lot of people then reach out to other indigenous communities to, to remember the way how to do that, because that's something we are not innately taught in as much anymore, I find, in the West. It took me a while to, to really exp to find that again and what really resonate, resonates with me and how I can make that connection. And I think one of the ways that... Um, we see is very universal is this, this concept of love, this pure love of, of, of the earth, of, of life itself and putting life at the center of all things. I think that is something we need to learn again. And I wonder how you see that. How can we then start to integrate sacredness in our daily lives again? How, how can that be the new norm or the, with the values we have nowadays? Claudio, thanks for reminding me of that. That I did not use that famous four-letter word, which is not, <laughs> but it was implicit in all that was I was saying, uh -huh. because the feeling of coherence mm -hmm. is means the feeling that I'm relating to you, to others, yeah. in an unlimited, unconditional way, and that feeling is the feeling of love. It's the sensation of yeah. love, the yeah. manifestation of that sensation is the relationship I have to others, which means my coherence with the others. So love is implicit as a subjective, as a felt dimension of this great evolutionary trend mm. from chaos to coherence, mm. yeah, which is the great history of the universe. As far as we can put it together, it is an irreversible process, but a very non-linear process, full of full of halts, full of reversals, full of false starts. But yeah. on the whole, it's moving in that direction. And as conscious agents, we have this sacred responsibility to promote it, mm. to move it, willful to add, add our own in engagement to it, our own heartfelt engagement to move forward with it. Mm. And if you can feel the love for others, we are already moving. That is the key. That is the passport for moving to allow us to feel, not as an, purely as an abstract thing, but as a very concrete, coherent drive. I use a term which I just mentioned here once for to be, to be, uh, to be complete about this terminology. I use the term holotropism. Mm. And tropism is a attraction. Holism, holo means toward holism, toward wholeness, and attraction to wholeness. Mm. You know, after the Big Bang, as far as we knew, the first thing that emerged were the, the stripped hydrogen nuclei. And they began to organize in the sense that they attracted three electrons around them to specific 
energy shells around the nuclei. Now, what I want to say is that this is not as an automatic simple process. It's not only attracting electrons to put one to another. It, it's a build system building. This system has wholeness. They build hydrogen nuclei into hydrogen atoms, mm. working together, and then later on joining with deuterium and moving with all the elements of the table of, of elements toward the highest level or more complex levels of uranium and, and, and beyond, mm. and plutonium and so on. <clears throat> this is a wholeness orientation. If you could feel that mm. hydrogen nuclei, you would feel love toward the environment, toward its environment, toward the electrons, because it will attract the right kind of electrons into, in the right place so that that system becomes an integral whole system, not an aggregate, not a heap, but mm -hmm. something which has its own unity, its own life, its own development. Mm -hmm. So love is what we feel. Love is the key to it. Mm -hmm. But just recognize that what love indicates is the universal evolutionary drive toward higher levels of integration and oneness, all of which we sum up with the single term of coherence. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. But that is that yeah, that makes it all whole. I can feel this with this with this conversation going that way as well. And I really would like to know what do you what would you suggest to the youth? How can they start? Because they are the future. What would you suggest to them to to start to experience expand in this love, so to speak. Look beyond the everyday world and look beyond your own immediate impulses and needs. Try to find that you have some deeper tropism, some deeper attractions, that when you enter into yourself, you will find a, a, a world around you that welcomes you, that is, is ready to join with you that you can join with others, with people, with plants, with animals, with everything that, that swims or walks or, or, or flies on this planet. We can feel that if we just allow it to allow this feelness, this feeling to come through. So I would say, yes, step back for a moment. Step back from the from the your your work with the artificial intelligence systems with your cell phones and your computers and everything else. Use it as instrument, but not as objectives, as ends in themselves. Mm -hmm. Step back from the wish to, to acquire more and more money or more and more influence or power. That is a natural instinct as well, but it has been overdone. <clears throat> that this mas typically masculine instinct toward conquering, mm -hmm. toward going out and 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 bringing into our own sphere of influence and more and more people and more and more things. All that has to be complemented with an essentially feminine mm -hmm. impulse toward community, toward family, toward working together with joining. You see, both of these need to be brought together. Mm -hmm. We have always emphasized the masculine is this tremendous search for power, mm -hmm. nuclear power, electric power, power over over of the minds of others, all all the search for power has cre created conflicts and, and breakdowns. And we have to recompense that by the discovery that we have in us also this typically feminine value, which can be had just as much by men as by women. Mm -hmm. It's just that women have more of it by nature. Mm -hmm. They are born more into the family circle mm -hmm. and environment but we can recover that as being human beings we share both the female and the male attributes and and values and mm -hmm. impulses so i say step back for a moment let your consciousness allow to, to to come up with what is your deeper sense of mission what is it really that you want to do in life what is it? What is you can? What can you accomplish for yourself? Always keeping in mind the saying of Gandhi: "Be the change that you want to see in the world." How, if you change, you will change others, because Gandhi's insight is the insight of science. 
the holographic universe, the universe in which all quantum universe in which all things are connected. So as what happens to one also happens to the others. So if you change, it won't be without sequence, won't be without uh, without results, mm -hmm. without consequence. Your change will reflect change around you and will contribute to a movement toward higher levels of wholeness and love, a tropism toward joining together to survive and to thrive on this earth, one together with the others. Together we can do it. And we have to realize that we are very close to that tipping point. But if we don't make this change in ourselves, don't come back to what we really are, then we could be endangering not only our generation, but our future generations as well. Mm. Wow. What a beautiful message. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Laszlo. And before we end this conversation, because I know you have so much to do, um, is there any book that you would like to to share with us that, that you have just recently published or that you feel that is really a good addition beside all the other 106 books that you have written or co-written or edited? But is there any specific that you feel this is one you would really like to talk about or recommend now? In a more practical way, is a book that I have I published, what, six, eight months ago which is called The Survival Imperative. Oh. And it's available on Amazon and everywhere, wherever books are sold. And here I, I try to describe what are the necessary steps for us to rejoin the evolutionary trend so you can move forward. I've also done another book which has been published only a, few, only a very short while ago, so, I don't know, seven, eight weeks ago. And this is called The Great Upshift. Mm because I'm using the term upshift. This is the new movement from a, from a downgrading toward conflict, toward an upgrading toward wholeness, love and, and, and joining. And here I invited 35 well-known people, well-known for their insight, not necessarily for, for money or, or, or for the influence or power, mm -hmm. but for the insight into deeper issues into science as well as spirituality mm -hmm. and they contributed their insi insights how we can upshift in a practical way mm -hmm. so the great upshift is a second book which is available now on all the places on the on the internet and uh, wherever books are sold mm -hmm. and now i just mentioned this i'm now in the process of writing a book which I hope we were able to get that. And with a smaller number of people still, I have eight of my collaborators to come joining me, writing a book, which is on the topic that I've been speaking about now. The book will be called Dancing with the Planet. Mm. You know, mm. a secret mission on Earth. Mm. So this, watch us for that. There will be probably a few more, several months, more months that I hope it will come still in, in well in, in, in during this year. Yeah. calendar here and this is my message that i want to leave that start dancing with the planet because you'll dance the dance of life the dance of wholeness dance of, the dance of healing thank you for the opportunity to discuss this and let's spread this word together as much as we can we can yes and thank you so much and i so look forward to reading those books you've mentioned again dr laszlo and like I said, thank you so much for taking the time, for speaking to me and, and sharing your, your innate wisdom. From your heart, I could feel it. And uh, I really uh, hope that you uh, keep sharing your wisdom with us for a very long time. And thank you again. Mm -hmm.